Hi everybody and welcome to a little talk through of the puppet show which is one of our challenge pieces. It's our level two challenge piece. So this actually has a lot of technical challenges in, in it and so before we get started with the whole piece we're going to do a little bit of getting ready technically and one of the things we want to do is make sure that the bow grip is really strong. So we're going to do a few little exercises. The first one is to take your fourth finger, we're gonna hold the bow straight up, and we're gonna go tap, 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 like this on the bow. And then we're gonna take our first finger, and we're gonna tap, tap, tap with the first finger. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the middle two fingers, and we're gonna crawl up and crawl down. That one's pretty hard. We'll try that again. Crawl up and crawl down. And let's repeat. So the pinky's gonna tap, and then it's gonna sit right on the inside of the octagon and the first finger is gonna tap and you'll feel your grip locking as we do this. Now, some, some of you have your thumb on the outside of the bow and that's totally fine. If that's where your um, stage is, that is great. And all of this can be done with the thumb outside as well as inside. So we can crawl up, we crawl down, tap, 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 lock it in. If you're inside, bring your thumb inside. And now we have a beautiful bow grip and if we want to get a little stronger, we can do what I call pinky push-ups. I'm demonstrating them right here. And what we're doing is we're letting the pinky curl up and then pushing down really firmly with that pinky muscle till it goes almost straight and then we curl up again. So pinky push-ups. One, two, three, four, whoops, five. Mine slipped a little bit, that happens sometimes. Okay. So now that we have a nice strong grip and everything is nice and round, we're ready to start practicing the bowing for this piece. So in this piece, the bow has to lift as we do the left hand pizzicato. So we have to get used to lift, land, lift, land. And each time you land, you want to land firmly on the string and then play. So land, play, land, Play. So let's just practice those a bit. Land, play, land, play, land, play. Excellent. So then we have to practice the other thing that is fairly difficult here, and that's the left hand pizzicato. So a left hand pizzicato requires your finger to pull the string and get a nice ringing tone. So I think of it as kind of grabbing and pulling. So you grab the string and pull. And in this piece, we have to do it mostly with your third finger, but sometimes we have to have another finger down. For example, at the end of the first, well, actually at the very beginning of the first line, we have our first finger down on the E string and we're plucking with our three. Try to get a really nice, big, clear ringing sound. And then we can try it on the A string and on the E string. And if we put it all together, it sounds like. Let's practice that one more time. See if we can get those pizzicato notes to really jump out. goes kind of fast and it is tricky so I recommend starting by playing it without the slurs and obviously a bit slow let's try that like that, we can try to do it with hooked bows. So we're going to hook three per bow.
a very nice tone going in the right hand and it gets a very even um, fingering pattern going in the left hand. So now we're going to do the same thing but we're going to smooth it out. So we're going to go slowly with slurs. that I used pretty small amounts of bow and as I get faster and faster I'm going to use less and less bow. If we use too much bow it just sounds sloppy and we're likely to hit strings that we don't want to hit. So here it is a little faster. and smaller bow. So don't worry if you can't keep up with that speed yet. It takes time to get there. So do it slow a few more times and eventually it will happen. So the other section in this piece, we, if we skip down a few more lines, is in the key of G. So suddenly we have low twos on the A string and the E string, before we only had a low two on the E string. Um, and in this section, it's slow and lovely, and it says poco espressivo, which means we want it to be very expressive. So let's play it together once. Here we go. in this um, section. One is in the last bar of the first line where you have the sliding two. So that's just a high two sliding backwards and we want to make it as beautiful as we can. And it is in a measure that says RIT, which is short for retard, which means to slow down. So if we play the whole bar, it sounds and then we get this measure that goes which gives us a wonderful opportunity to slide and to go into third position. So I'm going to suggest instead of playing that high note with a fourth finger, that we're going to play it with a second finger and we're going to take our hands and slide right up there. So if, you're, if this is the first time you're shifting, what you need to know is that your thumb is moving with your hand. So it all moves together like this. If I turn it this way, you can see even better. The thumb does this. The other thing that happens when we shift is that the, our arm slides further under the violin. A good warm-up exercise for this is just to take your second finger on the A string and slide all the way up your violin and do a little left-hand pits at the top. Let's try that again. So second finger's on your A string, you're going to slide all the way up the violin and pluck at the top. So now if we put this note into the piece, it's going to sound like this. It's going to sound like... And then we're going to jump back down. So the way we accomplish that slide is we're going to take our second finger on the E string and we're going to slide up to that note on the E string as well. I'm putting a little vibrato on it. Maybe I shouldn't do that for practicing. So we're going to do a low two on E and I'm going to slide up to the B. And as we do it, the whole arm slides under the violin, the thumb slides under, and the thumb slides together. And then slide back and slide up 
and back. This is a shifting exercise, which is very good for you. You can do it lots and lots of times. And when we first practice shifts, we practice them very slow and very heavy so that we can hear where we're going. And as we get better at the shift, then we can lighten it and only make it as heavy as we want. And, and when I say heavy as we want, what I really mean is we make it as heavy as we want to hear. So maybe we only want to hear the top of the note. So we've lightened up all the notes, or maybe we want to hear more of it, or maybe only part. And that, I think, is probably the best way to play this particular shift, is only with a little bit of the slide showing. So here is that line. Jump down. And now we're going to put it all together. Here we go. Whoops, I made a mistake. We're going to do that again. to also attach to this uh, a rendition of Daphne and I playing it together with piano and violin for you to play along with. So I hope you enjoy it and I hope you practice this carefully and well. Enjoy. <laughs> 